Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. All right. Would you like to be in prayer, please? That'd be great. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to get together, and we just pray, Lord, that you would bless this conversation, this interview, Lord, from start to finish. We pray, Lord, that you would grow us through it, strengthen us in the bonds of fellowship, Lord, and we just pray, have your will and your way in this interview. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First of all, I want to start off by saying thank you for making time to do this. And now let's get into the questions. Can you please tell me the story of how you felt called to your ministry? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I never received like an audible calling or anything like that. Um, I was born and raised in Eagle River, Alaska, and I loved it there. I love my home. I love Alaska. And I knew I never had the freedom to leave or go elsewhere. I knew that this is where I am. This is where I serve. And this is where I wanted to be from a very young age. Um, I did go outside of the state for college and I wanted to become a teacher. I loved working with young people and youth. Um, I helped out my youth leaders, uh, growing up just kind of like a, as an assistant. And, um, I loved working with teens and, uh, while I was in college, um, when I would come home, I met my husband, brother Robbie, and, um, I was very excited that he too felt that Alaska was home, that this is where we wanted to be. And um, he was already working with the youth in Palmer. And so from here, there on out, I guess you could say, we've uh, been serving with the teens in our church. Um, I also get to work with uh, women and moms groups and help out with Sunday school. And so that's how it started. And that's where it's at currently. That's amazing how you just felt like, you know what, this is the place I belong. I'm going to stay here and watch over these young people. All right, next question. What are your personal views on social media? Social media. I love how we can connect like right now. It is so good to get to see you or not at HYC or youth camp. And I feel like I'm sneaking in like a little visit. <laughs> um, I love that. I love how it can connect families, um, especially if you're like in the military. Um, it makes connection so much easier, which is a blessing. Um, I think it brings people together that would otherwise never get to know each other from different parts of the world, uh, from different walks of life. And it's, it's just amazing. And it's so fast. Um, we click a few buttons and we're able to connect. If I want to spread an announcement like potluck is Sunday, I can make an announcement and send it out through Facebook and get people to sign up in a very speedy fashion. Whereas you used to have them, a list and then call people and it's fantastic. However, that speed can be our worst enemy. If I am having a bad day, I can very quickly put out a message and spread that today is a horrible day and I don't feel good and so-and-so hurt my feelings. And it can very quickly send out messages so far in reach that it's too <laughs> too far to, to get it back, to take those words back, to yeah. take that attitude back. And we need to be careful of that. Um, it's, like I said, a wonderful tool that can be used, um, but it can very quickly cause problems. And sometimes if we communicate things um, that we're facing on the media and it spreads, or if we take pictures and, and, and share them that were meant for a different group, it, feelings can get hurt um, and it can very quickly um, ruin ministries. It can mm -hmm. be used to spread ministries, uh, prayer warriors, prayer, uh, you know, if you have requests, you can spread them, but it can also, it's like two sides of a coin. It can yeah. have a negative effect as well. So I just encourage people, you know, feel free to use it, but make sure you have accountability. Um, if the first thing I'm doing is waking up in the morning and grabbing my phone before I've even put my glasses on and checking Facebook, I need, I need to check myself. Um, just making sure you have time uh, allotments that you don't find that your whole day has been wasted. Um, it's so easy to happen because there is a lot of science behind how different apps are made. They are made to attract you, to give you the um, reward every time you check, you know, oh, I have, I have so many notifications and it's, um, it's very, just very science-based. It, it, it's good at reaching that addiction uh, quality. Um, however, uh, when you set yourself up with accountability, when you have someone to check in on you, when you give yourself time limits, 
social media can be used in a very good way. Yeah, that's all very true. All right, next question. What is your view on fasting? Fasting. Oh, wow. Um, fasting is powerful. It is super powerful. Matthew 17, 21 says, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And I would say fasting is like a weapon Mm -hmm. and you don't want to find yourself bringing a knife to a gunfight. And sometimes you're going to face battles where prayer is not enough. And if you want to have the victory, you're going to have to make sure that you've put self aside, that you strengthen yourself spiritually before you face those battles. Uh, There's a book called uh, Fast Forward by Pastor Josh Herring. And there's a quote in there that really bless me when it says that hell is well aware (laughs) that the one who fasts will likely be the victor in every battle simply because of the ammunition they possess in the spirit. And it is, it's a weapon that if you can dedicate, if you can discipline yourself too fast, you're going to put that weapon in your arsenal. And it means that there are battles that you'll be able to face guaranteed victory that if you didn't have that weapon, you wouldn't be able to have that victory. So fasting is incredibly important. Um, If you've never fasted, start small, give yourself goals. It's going to be hard no matter what. If you've been fasting for a few weeks, if you've fasted since you were young, it doesn't matter. Fasting is always hard and that's the point. It's putting flesh aside and uh, giving God the credit where it's due. Um, Someone said that letting fasting is letting go of the visible Mm -hmm. to get in touch with the invisible. And I just loved how that was phrased. When we let go, we push the plate aside and we let go of what we can see. It makes room for God to do things that we never even imagined. That's all very true too. All right. What are your views on praying every day? Oh, I love this question. Um, Prayer is communication and it's very important each and every day in a relationship, you need communication. And um, if I were to think of like brother Robbie and myself, if I walked out one day, started the day, brushed my teeth, got dressed, got the kids in the car to take to school and didn't say a word to my husband, there'd be something wrong. <laughs> that wouldn't go over well. Yeah. We wouldn't make it well. He'd know something was wrong if I didn't talk in the first 30 seconds I was awake. But communication is key. Um, If I'm not talking to the Lord, if I'm not praying, thanking him for the day, um, asking questions, asking him to put a guard over my mouth and to lead me and guide me throughout the day, the day is not going to go well. There's Mm -hmm. a, a hindrance to our communication. So prayer, daily prayer is essential. We've got to have it. Yeah, that's very true, too. All right. What is your view on reading or studying your Bible every day? This really links well with the the prayer question. Um, Mm -hmm. The Bible's called our daily bread. Um, You're going to wake up each day and eventually you're going to get hungry. You know, you need, you need, you need that daily bread. Um, I think of the Bible story with the manna and how God provided each day exactly what they need that day. But if Mm -hmm. they tried to save up the food for the next day, it would get moldy and gross. And I think reading your Bible is like that. Each day, there's something in there for you for that day, for your current attitude, for your current circumstances. And you might have read your Bible for three hours yesterday, but today's a brand new day. And we can't skip a day because there's something God's communicating. He wants to communicate to us for this day. And we need to take the time to give him the opportunity to speak. It's the living word. So it does apply. There's been so many times where I can read a passage that I've read many times over the years. And it's been, a, you know, it's God's word. It's good. It's awesome. But then that day, it's critical. It's exactly what I needed to hear in yeah. that moment. So I'd say read it every day. If you can get a chapter in, great. If you've established a discipline in reading your Bible, step out of your box, try something new. Um, Maybe it's reading, you know, cover to cover in a certain amount of months. Maybe it's to take one book of the Bible and read it over and over and over and dig deep into the historical context and just dissect it. Um, 
pray about it. If you're not sure where to start and God can put it on your heart where he'd like you to be. Maybe your pastor's giving you a challenge of uh, a, a direction he wants to take the church. And um, we've been challenged once to read the book of James a hundred times. That was amazing. And uh, anytime you read the word, you put study in, God will bless it. Yeah, that was really good too. All right, next question. What is your view on giving others Bible studies? Giving others Bible studies. Oh man, I am an extrovert. So I love reaching out and talking to people. However, I have very, very many family members and friends who are very introverted. And this question alone would probably have them shaking in their boots. Um, Teach a Bible study, lead a Bible study. That's so much responsibility and people are looking at you. Um, however, it's not like that. A Bible study can be like this, just talking over coffee or milkshakes or just hanging out and, or, or reading a Bible passage together and studying it together. Um, Bible studies can be done with people from your church, others in your youth group, or they can be done with your neighbors. Um, we're currently, my husband and I are in a neighborhood Bible study and we don't even lead it. But it's such a blessing to get together with people who are all coming. They're hungry to grow in the Lord from different walks of life and to come together with them and be able to share, but also glean. Um, it's amazing how when God uses the word or puts something on the heart of one individual, when they share that, it can af- it has a ripple effect. It affects others. Mm-hmm. And um, do it. Step out of your comfort zone. Um, maybe you're like, well, I don't want to lead it. Start with friends, get a group from youth youth group together, just two or three of you to spend that time in the word. And you'll also see that your confidence will grow. You don't have to be an expert um, or a grown up in the word to lead a Bible study. You can just start, let's start in Genesis. Let's read the stories. Let's talk about this. Let's let's start in the, the New Testament and read about what Jesus did. You can read together. You don't have to know it all. And just know that when they have questions or you might be worried about someone who comes um, that wants to challenge your, your beliefs, stick to the word, go back to the word. And if you get a question you don't know the answer to, be honest about that. Like, you know, I'm not sure. I know this, this whatever that might be, but yeah. let me go get scriptures for you. Let, let me take some time. It's okay to say, hey, I, I'm going to get solid answers for you and come back next week or come back. Make sure you do it though. If you say that you're going to get an answer or look for an answer um, or counsel with your pastor or youth leader, um, follow through and do that. But you don't have to be an expert to, to teach a Bible study. We're all called to spread the gospel, to share this good news. And there are so many people that have no exposure and they are interested and just stay in the word. You can't go wrong if you're staying in the word. That's also very, very true. All right, second to last question. What is your view on spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare. My husband uh, recently taught on this and he started his message with, um, well, we're all in battle, whether we know it or not. (laughs) He's like, you are. Uh, Spiritual warfare happens all around us. And that is um, uh, the ultimate fight for souls. Um, God wants you in heaven with him. Satan wants exactly the opposite. And so spiritual warfare is the unseen battle that happens to draw people away. Satan is doing everything he can to distract, um, to get you too busy, to um, get you focused on self, fears, uh, workload, and just draw you away from the Lord and um, to hinder your faith. And spiritual warfare happens because it's not just one-sided. It's not just the devil attacking. It can also be God's people rising up and setting mm-hmm. boundaries, praying protection, hedges of protection over those that their their loved ones, their peers at school, um, their family members, their friends, their neighbors, their community, you can fight back. And we talked a little bit about weapons through fasting and prayer. When we armor up and you have that daily armor on, you go throughout your life. The spiritual warfare is all around you. And you might go to the grocery store and have no idea the battle that's going on to the individual right behind you in the checkout line. But God does. And if you stay in the word, you stay prayed up and you're fasting, God can move and and give you insight, information that only God knows so that you can speak a timely word. Um, Maybe that person's praying, you know, God, if you're real, have somebody 
tell me this or ha have somebody recommend reading the Bible or, ha you know, have somebody and they'll, and they'll put these tests out. They'll fleece God. And if you're sensitive enough to the Lord during that spiritual warfare time, he'll call you to battle. And you might find yourself going up to a stranger and saying, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I feel that I'm told to tell you this and God can use you to spark just a fire in someone else. So spiritual warfare, it's real. It's happening all around us. And even if we try to be an ostrich and put our head in the sand, the war still rages. And mm -hmm. I would much rather get my armor on and go make a difference and be that protection for those around me. Yes, all very true. All right. Any other advice you'd like to give to everyone watching today? Everyone watching. Uh, don't give up. Stay strong. God's got your back. And I just want to encourage you, no matter where you're at, um, where you're living, who you have surrounded you, if you feel like you have this amazing support network or not, you are loved, you are making a difference. And never forget that you can reach people that others cannot. Your specific circle is going to be different than every other person's on the planet. And God's got a plan. So keep strong. And uh, we're cheering for you. Man, that's true, too. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Could you please end us in prayer? Sure thing. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to get together. We thank you for the technology that allows it to happen. We thank you, Lord, for a boldness that we can have in you. And we ask your hand to be upon each and every one listening to this right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for making time for this again. See you at HYC. Bye. Sounds like a plan. Bye, girl.